Corticosteroids, or cortisol, is the golden medication for dermatology. It has always been the most prescribed medication by dermatologists. Just like all steroids, you have to know and be very familiar with the step-up and step-down therapy. You increase and decrease the medication based on the patient's response and the flare-up of symptoms or the remission of, this, of the symptoms. Steroids inhibit the immunity either locally or systemically, which is why they remain as the first-line treatment. They can be taken as an oral pill or IV where it goes systemically to all over the body or can be applied topically to a specific area. And of course, systemic usage have a lot more symptoms or side effects than topical usage. It specifically works by inhibiting both B and T cells, so it works in the lymphocytes. There are also evidence suggesting that it causes T lymphocytes apoptosis. Generally speaking, dermatology diseases that are mild to moderate may benefit most by the use of steroids. The severe or chronic skin conditions may require more potent or higher dose of steroids, and they may also require a more potent drug. Diseases that are most responsive to steroids include any acute inflammatory skin condition, allergic contact dermatitis, atopic eczema, esteatotic eczema, discoid eczema, and napkin dermatitis. Less responsive conditions can benefit by steroids, but not as much as the first group. And these include plaque psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, lesion simplex chronicus, lesion planus, subacute cutaneous lupus, and papular urticaria. Again, steroids can be used in these conditions, but they're not as effective. And conditions where steroids are least effective include palmoplantar psoriasis, discoid lupus, chronic hypertrophic lesion planus, granuloma annular, and keloid scars. Sometimes when we're applying topical steroid, we can use an occlusion material, like a glove for example. We simply apply the steroids and we put something that is bio-occlusive as a dressing. This significantly increases the potency and efficacy of topical steroids, but it also increases the side effects. As a good rule of thumb, anything that increases warmth and moisture will increase the efficacy of topical steroids because it increases the penetration into the skin. When it comes to side effects, the more potent the steroid, the more side effects you'll have, which is the rule for all medications actually. We see more side effects in children and infants. Locally, the only side effect that we care about is thinning of the skin. Systemically, however, even topical steroids can cause symptoms of Cushing syndrome and hypercortisolemia. Sometimes we can use intralegional therapy. We basically inject the steroid into the lesion. This is extremely effective and much more potent than simply applying it topically. We use it in conditions where the lesion is reluctant to treatment. The most infamous culprits include keloid scars, acne cysts, discoid lupus, and any hypertrophic lesion. And it can also be used for alopecia areata. Sometimes we can use systemic steroids, either orally or intravenously, to treat other dermatological diseases, such as bullous pemphigoid or pemphigus vulgaris, systemic lupus erythromatous with extensive skin involvement, any allergic condition where the allergen is known and cannot be avoided, for example, giving penicillin to a patient who is penicillin sensitive. For example, if a pregnant patient is having streptococcal infection and the infection is especially sensitive to penicillin. In this case, even if the patient herself is hypersensitive to penicillin, we can give corticosteroids to desensitize the patient and then we can use penicillin and any other severe condition, such as lesion planus, urticaria, pyderma, gangrenosum, etc. 
Keep in mind, when we say systemic steroids, we can simply use orals. We don't have to use intravenous or intramuscular. If oral steroids resolve the symptoms and the patient is satisfied, we can continue with the oral treatment. We only progress or escalate to intravenous or intramuscular if the oral treatment is not enough. Use the link below to get access to the full dermatology course. This includes more than 60 lectures with study notes and revision cards. You will also get access to the flashcards and MCQs. Thank you for watching.